Hey class, let's go get to our readings and think about this Charles Long reading. Well, let's see if it's going to let me log on this way. There we go. I'm going to my courses and groups, and here we are. And uh, mine will look a little bit differently than yours will look. But I go over to the modules, what to do in module one, and click on my Charles Long reading, America, Religious Interpretations of. So you can tell this is an encyclopedia entry, and what the editors decided was rather than put it under R, since it's an encyclopedia of religion, you really couldn't use every entry according to the word religion. So they used America, the central topic of this, America, religious interpretations of. That's why the title is a little awkward. All right, so let's just get rid of that stuff and move over to long. Oh, we've got things popping in. I might have to change that. Now, long is not easy, but here we go, and I'm going to try to give you some overviews. If you have a look, I'm going to go through this in probably a couple of short, less than 10 minute introductions here. But as you can tell, right, there is key information throughout this. So he starts out by giving us this lay down about how this thing that becomes America uh, in the creation of the cartographers takes its time getting together. There's this Alaska thing and this Hawaii thing that comes out. And he says, while this essay is centered upon the political entity of the United States of America, nevertheless, these larger questions of a Canada, of a Mexico, of a Hawaii, create this heterogeneous landscape. And he dares to talk to us about the possibility that this heterogeneous landscape that doesn't just pay attention to the border at Texas, and it doesn't just pay attention to the border at the top of the U.S. into Canada, but that rather there is weather, there is landscape, there is histories across this context for which he is going to think about the orientation of the people on this land, how they understand by orientation, it's a very important, powerful word for long. He defines the religious spirit of the United States, of a place like the United States, as, and he defines religion as an orientation to the temporal and spatial arrangements in which one then narrates a story about what is my ultimate significance. Now, if we were in the middle of Italy, if we were in the middle of Zimbabwe, if we were in the middle of different places, both our spatial and our temporal influences would mean we would ask that question differently. If I am at the base of Mount Fuji, the questions I have about my spatial and temporal meaning are necessarily different than they are when I am at the base of Heart Mountain. So Long is introducing us to a way of thinking about religion as an orientation to the spatial and temporal constructs with which the human body makes its way, do, 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 makes its way around. Did I just do that? That's interesting. Okay. The way the human body makes its way around and makes meaning, as meaning-making animals, then, it is the question of what is the ultimate significance of my place that for long constitutes the religious life. So Charles Long does not go walking into churches in order to find out, hey, what's the religious life here? Rather, he takes that meta step back 
at the spatial and temporal components of a person's life, asking what are the issues of ultimate significance to them, because that is where the religious life is happening. We now have this broadly, wildly, landscape-related meaning of religion. And he's going to give us some foundation in, if you're talking about America, and we are, we're talking about this one mountain in America, um, he's given us the big picture about how has the sense of space and time taken on a particularly American orientation. Because we have to contend with that through all the layers of Heart Mountain. All right, so, um, and some of this is quite thick language. So, there are certain modes of the given and the a priori nature occasioned by the name and meaning of this space. The given and a priori nature uh, that you have arrived into the middle of a story when you were born in America. So that there are some givens to that story. There are some a priori conditions, things that happen prior to you upon which your storytelling and meaning making then either have to contend, people sometimes reject those stories, but uh, you didn't arrive at a blank slate. He's going to look at what are some of these givens and a priori's of an American orientation. Now then he moves into Fernand Brodel, and if any of you guys are history readers, you want to read the Mediterranean and the Mediterranean world in the age of Philip II. Brodel did not write to us Philip II. He starts with the Mediterranean, that body of water that organized food, movement, transportation, and meaning and myth, and the Mediterranean world. Then, where were you moving camels? Where were you moving horses? Where were you moving cows? Who was moving what? Where did they start doing pottery? That he's going to give you the Mediterranean, then he's going to give you the Mediterranean world, right? This whole material market based world of people traveling over mountains, through mountains, around mountains, across waters, in order for you to understand Philip II. So, this is a key. I am introducing you to this class through this tradition of thinkers who say until you've got the land and the way the land moves people and then the history of how people moved and networked across that land, you cannot talk to me about Philip II. Do not start with the day he was born. We've got to lay out this landscape first. Right. So, we even hear at this beginning that, there, that for Brodel, then, to do such a massive version of history, he identified three kinds of speed, three kinds of uh, temporal rhythms. So, the longue durée is going to be um, between seasonal cycles and uh, glaciers that came down and then glaciers that receded back up. But there are people who are snowing most of the time and there are people who are olive growing most of the time and, and that those are long temporal rhythms. But then um, there is history is conjuncture uh, and that is, um, let's say Philip II's reign might be one of those that if you start with landscape and you get your history around and you talk about the reign of well maybe the Ottoman Empire those are kind of conjunctions but then finally there's that fast moving history of events I love this a history of brief nervous fluctuations by definition ultra sensitive the least tremor set all antenna quivering said Brodel so Right from the long durée, think about that. What used to, we used to be able to call it glacial movement. Now, once your glaciers are starting to move closer to the speed of conjecture, conjuncture, and maybe even uh, evenementiel, the 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 short, speedy event, then we're living in some wild times. But I digress. So, 
again, Long is telling you that we even need to think of time and the different temporal modes of an America in order to understand how these little people walking across America, that there will be different rhythms and um, touches into time. So that a person who is both part of the Pax Americana, if we or post-Cold War America, let's say that's a conjuncture, is also going to experience 9-11 as the événement yel. So that an awareness of the human moving across space and through different registers of time. And he goes on to say that compared to the Mediterranean, where you might have had Athens and kind of a Zeus-like uh, gods up on the, in the Pantheon and um, revelations of Mary across the uh, for 2,000 years across Northern Europe or a kind of uh, think of the Middle East you had both the Old Testament and the Hebrews and Judaism and then you get uh, Christ as an eruption of the divine right there in the Middle East and then uh, 400 years later you get the arrival of the prophet Muhammad so that the Mediterranean being this place where ancient traditions of the manifestation of the divine happened and he's going to say we got a whole different thing. The Atlantic is however not a revealer of deities, seers and prophets. It is not under the sign of revelation but of freedom civilizations and rational orders. It manifests no regard for the layered thickness of time, right? We're the people who go ahead, progress. We are the people who run by our clocks. It is a world justified by the epistemologies of Descartes and Kant who located our knowing in our mind, the mind of an individual, uh, empirical methods, and the ethical economies of Adam Smith and Karl Marx so that we are, we are uh, this kind of spanky, new, forward-driven people, not that kind of ancient, deep-seated Mediterranean world. Now look how much work Charles Long goes to just to set you up to his definition that for his purposes, religion is defined as orientation. He has already covered spatial, temporal, and the characteristics of an America created out of, of slave trade, globalization, um, market, and the notion that uh, there was a destiny for them to take over and use the land. Now, because I want to keep these pithy, we're just going to get through page one this time. You'll hear more from me. Uh, so dig in at Charles Long. It's good.